Welcome back everybody to the Bread and Burn YouTube channel. Today we've got a list of topics to cover. It's a little bit of a channel update, so let's get right to it. So if you think what we've done up until now is redneck, this is gonna take the cake. So first topic is the Mid-Ohio race. Anybody that watches the channel uh, regularly saw that we did some work on the Champ car before we took it to Mid-Ohio. Um, that video will be coming out next. It's gonna have to be more of a narrative, unfortunately. Um, a lot happened with the car. We had some engine failure issues. Um, so I did not have the time to just keep my phone out and record, which really stinks because there was a lot of good stuff and funny stuff that happened. Um, just a lot of work that we did to try and make Sunday's race, which unfortunately we did not make it to. Um, but good news is we had a good day of racing on Saturday, so we've got some good footage um, from NCAR, and what I'll do is kind of tell the story and kind of explain what happened around that footage there. Um, so that video will be coming out next. Um, and then from there, um, the champ car is gonna be more heavily involved with the channel, um, and that leads us to our next point. So, uh, moving on, uh, Braden, um, he is the Breden in the Breden Burt YouTube channel title, which we'll get to that in a second as well. Um, this kind of leads into the next point I'm going to make. Um, he sold his Evo to um, get some funds for his landscaping business, which he's got a pretty successful landscaping business and he needed uh, a bunch of money for mowers and trailers and stuff like that. So he made a wise business choice to sell off what is inevitably a money pit to um, make money to potentially have something bigger, better and badder later on. Um, he sold the car and it became a fiasco because the kid who bought it did not understand what he was getting and he treated a race car like a street car and it did not behave accordingly. Um, we have some theories on what happened, but it sounds like he blew the head gasket pretty immediately. <laughs> so we have theories, but um, unfortunately that kid um, was pretty upset about it, even though Braden explained the ins and outs of that car to him. I mean, this car was, if you saw the videos, it's a race car. You can drive it on the street, but there's an air tank in the back that controls the clutch and the transfer case. There's not a lot of street cars that have that. And I have a feeling that this kid drove that car and was a little too hard on it for too long and it expired on him. So hopefully he got it fixed and he's, you know, learning it a little bit more and paying more close attention to what Braden told him um, and he can actually enjoy it. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping. Um, I hate to see that car just sit or get sold off again. Um, but, you know, you know, hopefully he lived and learned. But point is Braden sold his car. So now that leads us to our next talking point. So clearly, um, the channel's name is Bread and Bert. Um, the reason for that is everybody called me Bert, so that was pretty easy. Um, it's just people find it fun to call me Bert, and I enjoy it too. It's a good nickname. Um, Braden had a uh, job at a, an OE where he had a name tag on his shirt, and they misspelled it. They wrote it B-R-E-A-D-E-E-N, so we called him Bread. So the idea was we put the names together and the bread was Braden's name and then the E-N was kind of like an apostrophe at Bert. So it was like bread and Bert, Braden and Brett, right? It was childish, but you know, we enjoyed it. So anyway, the point is Braden sold his Evo. So for now, he's kind of off the side of the channel. Um, I'm hoping he gets something that uh, we can build and kind of bring him back into the channel. But um, currently what I'm looking at is doing a name change. Um, if you see down in the bottom corner of this video, there is a B and then a, like a smaller N and B for Bread and Burt. Well, what I'm thinking is to avoid having to do too much transition with this channel, I'm gonna change it to Burt Not Bought because I build everything I have. Definitely think that's a good name and it keeps the B and B in, in the mouth of the Precision Turbo in the bottom. So I think that's what we're gonna do moving forward. All right, two more points, stick with me. Next point is the K24 all-wheel drive Black Civic. Um, that is my personal car. That car right now, not right now, previously was in a limbo state because of this house behind me. 
Um, this thing has been sucking the life out of me. If anybody's been watching those videos, it's been very hard to keep working on cars while also maintaining working on this house. I refuse to give up on the project, so there's no chance I'm selling it or anything like that to deal with this. Um, I'm gonna have to work on them in harmony. So right now, the car is sitting in a state that I need to do an update on. There's been a little bit of work done. Um, my 3D printer behind me over here, you can see the one in there. That is my prototype printer, but this one's been the busy one. Um, we can get to that in a minute. but. Um, that, uh, that car right now is having parts 3D printed. I am currently working on the cooling system. So right now it's sitting with most of an interior, no wiring. So that's the state with that one right now. I'm working on the cooling system and getting the electronics placed so I can start wiring and get this thing running. I'm really hoping to have it running this time next year. There should be a lot of content on that thing moving forward. Um, but again, I'm balancing the budget with the house and that car and champ car for that matter moving forward. So next point. All right, so full circle to Champ Car, the blue Turbo D16 Civic. You'll see in the next video, we had a lot of trouble with the engine, um, and I'll explain that later. Um, but the point is, what we're gonna do moving forward with those videos, I am going to bring all of the engine parts for that car back to my house. James is gonna take all the engine parts back to his, or transmission parts back to his house. We are gonna tear these things down and commonize them and build two race-ready engines. And I say race-ready loosely. Um, they are going to be ready to go in the car, but they are they have to be bone stock long blocks, which is part of the reason we're having so much trouble with them. So those videos moving forward will be us uh, deconstructing, uh, analyzing, um, and then rebuilding, essentially. And I'm gonna see if I can get James to take some video on his end with the transmission because I don't have a whole lot of footage on the transmissions of those cars and James build one badass transmission. We haven't had a single issue with any transmission he's built yet. All right, so that covers the talking points I had right now. Um, what I'm gonna get into is how I've been working on the cooling system on the Black Civic. So thank you for hanging in there through that talk. Um, hopefully none of this comes as too much of a shock or anybody that's diehard to the channel, whatever. I'm not sure if I have any diehard people, but thank you for hanging in there with me guys. And I'm going to try to push the channel a little bit harder um, moving forward, maybe try to get some more info out there, make it more entertaining moving forward. So Black Civic, intercooler, radiator, cooling system. Let's talk about that. All right, so we are out here with my Civic. We have a KLM radiator and intercooler here. They're beautiful parts, I really like them. Um, and the only thing I didn't like is that radiator used to be like, it's the same size as the intercooler and it used to be right behind it. So that didn't utilize the entire top vent in the bumper. So um, what I did is basically just, um, that bracket on the radiator used to straddle the inlet to the intercooler and the outlet, I guess, right there. <clears throat> so what I did is I just literally just moved it up and then I 3D printed these brackets on the bottom, which these are super, those are like 5% infill. They're, they're no good for this. They'll break immediately, especially if it gets warm, they'll just melt. So these are just prototype brackets again. So what I'm trying to do is figure out exactly how I'm gonna mount the top, but this thing is like perfectly in there. It fits so nice, but I need to angle it forward just a touch um, and get the top mounted. And then I'm gonna build a bracket that basically goes from like a riv nut right here to the back side of this bracket. And then I'll have a bracket that goes from here to here to kind of help stabilize the uh, flex between basically the fact that it's only mounted at this bolt, so. So with the Champ car, we fight a lot of overheating. Um, of course, that car runs much longer than this one will. That thing runs for eight hours at least, at least seven hours um, with only five minute pit stops every hour and a half. So that car gets very hot and it stays very hot. Um, but dealing with the overheating issues is so annoying. So that is part of the reason that I moved the radiator up so that it gets straight air from the um, top vent in the radiator or in the front bumper. What I'm also gonna do is put a couple of probably CF, CSF drag radiators in the corners here. Um, and I think they're gonna have to lay at an angle because they're fairly large. I'm not even sure if they're gonna fit. I have a backup radiator that I could use, which is off an Audi S4 um, that would fit in that area, but I'm gonna run either one or two. I'm not sure yet. I probably will start with one over here, and these are gonna get changed out with 16AN, and 
that 16 will come right off of here and come to what is a T-fitting 16 right here. So it has a female that goes on to this uh, fitting here, and then it has a male on the other side of it, and then a male coming out the side of it. So what that can do, coolant comes out of the engine, goes into here. This will be obviously the main radiator, be the largest one. So that'll go straight into that. And then out of the T, it will go down to the drag radiator in the corners. And then we'll return to another T here, at which point it'll go back in the engine over here. So that's the idea. If need be, I could go a step further, put another one over there, have it come out of the engine to the T fitting, to the top of the drag radiator here, to the bottom, then to the top of the drag radiator over there, then to the bottom and then back. But that's a lot of plumbing and that's a big loop and a lot of water to move. So there may need to be an electric pump in line if that pump can't keep up, but we're gonna start with one for now. And then, you know, if the time, if it shows that it's necessary, then I'll just mirror print the brackets for this side over here. The cooling system in this car is gonna be ridiculous, but that's, a, that's what we're working on right now. Once that stuff's in there, then I need to get an intake manifold so that I can build the intake piping. That'll finish most of the intake. I'm probably just gonna run a turbo guard on that, I think, or I could 3D print a, um, an air box that could sit over here. Um, but I, I'm probably just gonna run a turbo guard, um, at least to start anyway, but that's where we're at. So now I think I need to take a couple measurements, which I'm not going to bore anybody with that, go home and then utilize those measurements to make the top brackets for the intercooler or the radiator. So that way we can get this thing fully mounted, cut the holes, and then start worrying about the sub radiators off to the sides. So, all right. So after we got our measurements on the car, I come back here and this is what I call the CBU, which is the complete body unit. And we need to take those measurements and go from the body unit to the intercooler, which I'm calling the cooling unit tall because it is the intercooler and radiator kind of in a tall formation. Um, and then this is my CBU bracket top front, right top front. So that is this one. So that is what I came up with for this. This is preliminary. This is probably not gonna be very strong. And then the rear on the right side, is this guy right here. So as you can see, it kind of goes from the intercooler. It's supposed to, let's see here. It's supposed to kind of straddle the intercooler. Um, chances are this won't be very tight. It has trouble, this can has trouble like with tight tolerances. So these will definitely need modified. Um, this guy down here on the intercooler itself probably will fit pretty well. Um, I got the tolerance a little tight, but that's ideal. So hopefully that'll work out all right. But this is what we're going for here for now. Eventually I'd like to tie this into the core support, but for now um, I'm just gonna work on this side of it. So what we're gonna do is export these to the Prusa Slicer. And this is the print that we come up with. And these are the draft parts. So um, we're gonna go out and fit them on the car. Um, again, these are draft, these are as fast and as fat as I can print. Um, the final model will be much nicer than this, but this is like, there's still support material all over this thing. I didn't bother to break off. These are, these are terrible prints. Just wanted them to be fast, double check dimensional accuracy, and then figure out where we gotta make changes. And there's like no infill here, so I could easily just break this thing in half. Um, the idea is just to fit it on and see how everything lines up and then make changes for the final parts later on. All right, now we are back at the car. Let's see if this stuff fits. I gotta take the bumper off. I actually put this on here the other day after I finished recording and it does touch right there, but it's very close to fitting. I think I might be able to get away with keeping my vents, but I may just cut them all the way out. All right, let's see if these fit. So we're going to try the left first. Um, reason being, I realized um, this entire piece of metal right here is not attached at this weld anymore. Um, I hit a deer in this car a long time ago, like 2010, and this corner got a little bit crumpled. Obviously, it's fine 
as far as the outside of the car goes, the body, but the actual frame is a little bit tweaked um, and this got broken. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drill all the spot welds out of this upper core support and make it so I can unbolt it. I'll just put rib nuts in and bolt it in. That way it's easier to kind of get into the engine, um, not having that in the way. And it won't have all these holes from the spot welds I had to drill, so that'd be nice. But anyway, let's see if this does. Ooh. All right, so actually pretty good. Let's see how this one turns out. Hmm. Well, you need to bring those down a little bit, apparently. Looks good. All right, so I based everything off center here. And it looks like, well, the entire hole is 20 mils. So clearly the center would be 10 mils. The center of that is pretty much at the top, maybe a little bit above. I'm gonna bring it down about 12 millimeters. It looks like it's angled forward a little bit too. So I will um, just rotate that face to rotate that back some to square that up. 